consumer. Hey, this is Nomad, host and creator of the Career Musician Podcast. Why do they call me Nomad? Well, I traveled the globe, spreading the joy of music one song at a time. And now I bring you wisdom, tried and true knowledge, and life experiences of my colleagues and peers in this crazy business we call music. On this episode of The Career Musician, we have a drummer circle with Richie Pena, James Agnew, Rashid Williams, Brian Spawn, and Xavier Valade. This is The Career Musician Podcast with your host, Nomad. Okay, so we're on a gig in Chicago. We're backstage after sound check, pre show. And what do we do? Well, we eat. There's catering, yay! So, we have Richie Pena, James Agnew, Brian Spawn, Rashid Williams, and Xavier Valade, and then there's me. <laughs> so I'm the only guitar player amongst five drummers. Clearly, it's not fair, as I am outnumbered. <laughs> but I bring up something really interesting. We're talking about the sociology of musicians. Now, we have egos. We've already deduced that. We know that we all have giant egos as musicians. We are our own worst critic, enemy, and all of the above. However, I started the conversation, I know I'm an instigator, with saying, how come all the drummers get along, but guitar players don't get along? Well, we discuss this and many more topics in this fun-filled episode. We're here in Chicago at the Northerly Island First Something Pavilion playing some shows and we got some amazing drummers in the house. What were you just saying about drummers and guitar players now? It's a known fact. All drummers get along. All drummers get along. All drummers get along. Every last one of us. We will walk into a room and become family immediately. You know what? Guitar players, not so much. And here's the thing. Now, I'm a guitar player by Uh trade. And I have to say, he's 100% dead right. I'm so glad we all understand. Yeah, oh, man. Why is that? Let's talk about the uh, the idiosyncrasies of that. Why, why do you think that is? I actually have no idea. Yeah. You would think that guitar players will get along because it's fewer guitar players than it is drummers. Good point. So nobody should be fearful of losing a gig. Good or point. nobody should be in competition. Yeah. Drummers, that's what Why are there so many more drummers? Seriously, you gotta ask that question? It's the best drummers instrument in the, the world. world. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind, this podcast series is with a round of drummers. It's always gonna be the coolest instrument on stage. Right. Um, that's hilarious. So tonight on the bill is Jill Scott and Lettucey and Avery Sunshine and Babyface. Although well, I, think- I, well, I like to make a point that uh, James Mook Agnew is playing for two of these artists. Yes, he is. One night. <laughs> James Mook Agnew is playing for two artists. He is playing for Babyface and uh, Lettucey. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about double dipping. Who knows about that? Yes. I know about it from church days. I don't think I've ever done it yeah. at this level. Oh, yeah. Well, double dipping is something we refer to when you can get two gigs in one night, one hit. When the stars align and you get two of the artists that you work for all in the same night and everybody's okay with it, right. everybody's willing to still cut you a check evenly, that is a beautiful thing. That's a very good point because it could be frowned upon because, well, wait a minute, well, why does he get to, you know, but, or, or from an artistic standpoint, he's my drummer. I don't want him playing with exactly. so-and-so. Exactly. I don't want yeah. her playing with this. She's my drummer. I mean, so it is a kind of a tight wire to, to walk a fine line. Let's talk about that as, as it relates to to business, how do you keep everyone happy? Because as contracted career musicians, first, we have to be concerned about the artist, right? But then there's artist management, then there's, there might be some other assistant managers, tour managers, but then of course there's production managers, yep. there's stage managers, there's the rest of the band. Let's talk about all the Background. politics that go, go along politics. with being a professional. Mm. Well, it's, about, it's about who you know, not to be cliche. Yeah. I think drummers nowadays, YouTube generation, everybody thinks about chops. Everybody thinks about yeah. chops. I was listening to you play today, and it was funny because I'm sitting there like, it's amazing that as a drummer, this guy has held my attention the like, whole time. At no point did I look at anybody else. Uh, and he's it. locked it in. Oh, yeah. At oh, yeah. no point did I miss chops. I didn't miss anything. I was like, he's locking he's the locked. music in. Yeah. You know? It's cool to see a virtuoso. Mm-hmm. It's cool to see that, right? And it's great to see it by itself. But man, if the music don't call for it, there's no excuse to play it. If it ain't part of it, if it's not going to make like the audience feel better about it or the crowd, right. it's just, you know, I came from like a Latin background nice. and, and it was all about chops, you know, but uh, ah, until, right. it, until 
And so you had an old man playing congas and a 14 piece guys who had to gel. You got to lock it in, Doc. That's it. Yeah. Right. It ain't three guys who are going to make it. He was like, you got 14 guys and you all have to play in You all sync. have to play together. That's hard. And that's it, man. And there's no click tracks. Nope. <laughs> that's that. the beauty it's about just... rhythm, too, though, because if you can manage to feel it, uh, it's yeah. infinite possibilities yeah. of what can, what can right. actually happen. That's why we have the best instrument in the world. Look, proven it again. Let's talk about polyrhythms on that note when you have a lot of guys playing together. Because if you have too many uh, guys playing the same rhythms, you're going to get flaming, right? Maybe not only polyrhythms, but let's talk about different subdivisions and groupings and say, hey, you're going to stick to this, you're going to stick to that, you're going to stick to this. And then when you get comfortable in that and you feel that, you feel the ebb and flow of that groove, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden somebody can step out and throw a polyrhythm on top, right? right? So first you have to build your foundation and you have to assign your your, your subdivisions, right? Yep. In a group setting. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that. I think there's always one person in the band who always sets a tone, whether it is by choice or not. As long as everybody is following that tone, it works. Because right. if you got two guys trying to lead it, it's going to clash. Or you're going to have a solo fest. You know, yeah, everybody. It'll just be a bit co- a competitive and no foundation yeah, it's, yeah exactly it's bad. right man. It's bad. I don't know about you guys I don't count those things anymore I don't either I no. just, just saw ears now yeah, yeah. so I'm feeling yeah. ears you know what I mean yeah. like I think when I first started shedding in Philly a lot I was trying to figure that stuff out like what is he playing like how is he playing and the more I did it the more I realized like it's really nobody really is saying well he's playing this so I'm gonna play the subdivision of that right it's, it's feel really, yeah it's all feel yeah. it's all feel now, conversely, though, like the setting you were talking about, yeah. you have a bonguero, a timbalero, you know, yeah. all these different guys. Yeah, you have a guy playing a clave. Yeah. So, so dissect that for us. I think that musically was always like the best lesson for me because you have a bonguero making sure that he's keeping pocket. You have a timbalero to the left. You have a guy playing bongos. Then you have another minor percussion, either playing guitars, maracas, or whatever. On top. And on top of it. Mm-hmm. So if one guy is off, the whole oh, thing man. is out. It doesn't matter how great you are, you are, your instrument next. Yeah. Is out, man. I heard it in church and I heard it everywhere. You're big ears. You gotta have big ears. Yeah, yeah. You gotta have the biggest ears. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this truly is Drummers United. We have Rashid Williams, who has been the drummer for John Legend and Jill Scott. Richie Pena, who has been the drummer for Natalie Grant, Babyface, Tony Braxton, David Foster, Andrea Bocelli. We have James Agnew, who has been the drummer for Jason Derulo, Babyface, and drummer and musical director for Lettucey. And then we have Xavier Valade, local Chicago drummer, and Brian Spawn, yes, the owner and manager mastermind of Spawn Drums. You're listening to the Career Musician Podcast with your host, Nomad. How come the new, what we call the information generation, how come they have it skewed? Let's talk about the, the YouTube chops thing. What's going on here? My personal opinion is that a particular level of access got granted. And when that access got granted, the appreciation for it fell. Ooh, point Perfectly back. Growing point. up, it's like early teenage years, and I'm playing for my first like gospel group at like 13. And, like stuff is good, right? You know, I hear about all these guys in Philly, Spanky, Don Robinson, Brian right. Bridgemore, yeah. Eric Trippett, Little John Robinson. Like I'm hearing about all these guys, and they're frequenting Philly because they're all from there. So I had to travel to Philly to go see them. Yeah, yeah it made me appreciate the process. I only got one night. I got one hour. Yeah. So to catch these guys, I got to get everything I can get. And I got to go home and practice it so that I can commit it to memory. Right. Now, everything is at your fingertips. You don't have to go anywhere. You can just log on to YouTube, log on to one of these other sites. And wow, you ever heard of Periscope where you can stream? Yeah. We were just talking we're just about it. Instead of buying where you record it and then post, yes, you actually it, stream it. It streams it's live. live. I'm like, what is live. this? That's we great. never had that crap. Nope. So, so at the end of the day, it's like, I know tons of youngsters who... I'll say to them, hey man, come to the studio, plenty of drums everywhere, set some stuff up, talk drums, talk shells, talk tuning, talk anything you want to talk. These guys say, well, I looked at this tuning thing on YouTube, and it said this. And then, yeah, man, I saw all your clips on, on YouTube, too. So, like, we don't really have to shed together. But that's, that's the era. That's, that's the era. That's, that's the new era. That, 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 they're lacking face-to-face communication, yeah, social sad, skills. But the sad thing, it also shows obvious guys that are working versus guys that aren't. Uh, that's the truth. It's guys that, like, me and me and Mook were just talking, and I was like, yeah, you get these kids, they'll take low money to no money right. to do the just game. to get out because to get they out and endorse them. Yep. And they think that that's all that matters in the game. Let me help the, if anybody who's listening dissect that a little bit. The reason why there's an issue with that is because what you're doing is you're diluting 
the yes. whole, the whole market. product, the yes. whole market. Yep. And you're, you're degrading the quality of, and the skill level yes. of what we as musicians are delivering to the artists that we're backing up. Yep. And, you know, if you have an experienced, well-seasoned guy, uh, even let's not say a veteran, let's just say a guy's been doing it on the you know, professional yeah. level five, six years, who knows? And he says, man, you know what? I can't do it for less than X amount of dollars. But you have a guy who's just starting it's his first year and he goes you know what for free oh I'll get for free for I'll free. come down <laughs> knock a thousand dollars off that and I'll do what what are you doing and that's so now thing, all yeah. of a sudden you have just stamped musicians as crabs in a bucket so everybody's going to cut each other's throat everybody's going to out you know uh, uh, outbid the next guy yeah. and, and then, before you know, know it what ends up happening is that the guys like us who really want to do it and want it to be right we end up taking the hell we take the loss because that's it's like right. well I can either not play music and just watch music crumble and go down the drain. Or I can play music for a lesser number and keep the integrity of the music. That's right. And that's where the love that's clearly, the love clearly love comes in. Love clearly comes but I mean, it's like, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, my one of my favorite cars that I do not own yet, and I will, I give myself, I think I'm two more years to my five year getting this car, is the World Edition Benz X650. They're like special order Benzes, you know right. what I mean? Like they don't even put them on lots. Right. It's like a $110,000 car. Right. I tell people all the time, there's a reason why that car costs that much. That's right. There's a reason why you can't go to a dealership and find that same car for $20,000. It's just right. not gonna happen. Right. Or even 60000 Or even 60000 but same way with musicians. There's a reason why that guy's expensive. He has clearly right. the, the proper everything the to fit that number. That's yep. so funny. You say as that. soon as you get the the youngster that just wants the the quick come up or whatever, yeah, you just went and put yourself into a, a bit of a hoopty, you know what I mean? Yeah. And with that wisdom, let me say, with that wisdom comes great enlightenment and great freedom. The other two weeks ago, I was on a private jet with Nathan East, Greg Killen Gaines, nice. and JR, or John Robinson, right? Nice. David Foster, Babyface, and Kenny G, we're all flying to a gig. And that very thing, Nathan East, I, we, I had the pleasure of in, interviewing Nathan and JR. They were gracious enough to do the podcast. And it's so funny you say that because Nathan East and, 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 and all these guys are notoriously very high paid, especially through time, you know? But not one of them mentioned that. Not one of them said, you know what? Well, I'm doing it for the money. I'm, you know, I'm here because I got the highest. Risk. No, no, no. It's all about the love. Yeah. And Nathan East, you know, look, himself, JR, man, I have a gig. Would you mind? Would you be into coming? Yeah, man, if I'm available, I'll come to the gig. You know, don't, they, they, don't, they don't say no. It doesn't matter. You know? Yeah. So there's a fine line between underbidding, right? Yeah. And also knowing your value and your worth. Yeah. That's right. And you then gotta, sacrificing. You gotta know your place. Yeah, you gotta know your place. And I mean, yeah. I tell guys all the time at home, because we do this, like we tour. This is what we do. Right. I don't touch my drums on tour. You know what I mean? Right. You got right. a drum tech. You know, right, you right, 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 right. Your drum tech does everything for you, and then right. I get up there, I play them. Especially now being a musical director, drums come last. That's the same thing. I'm the last guy on Everything stage. Else on the last guy. Everything else happens, and then comes right. right. yeah. drums. Uh, the crazy uh, yeah. thing is, when I'm home, I tell guys I get pleasure out of putting my small setup that I keep at home in my car, driving to a cover band gig. Yeah. Right. At a, at a small bar. That's right. Where Just nobody knows anything about anything. what I do outside yep. of that. They, as far as they know, I got a regular job that I'm showing up to the next morning. Yeah. And I came out to do it. I'm That's like, know the difference between that and a full tour. There know the go. difference in how you price yeah. that versus how you price a tour. Yeah. I do that stuff for free. You know what I mean? I just want to play. However, that's for the love of it. Yeah, that's for the love right. of it. You just got to realize the the business sense too. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's. Too many people just got all these worlds built into one and just mixed everything up. And it was like, That's right. I want to play drums. And then it was, okay, I want to play drums and make money. Then it, over time it became, I want to play drums, I want to do chops. Right. Then it was, I want to play drums, I want to do chops, and I want endorsements. And, oh yeah, why do I want endorsements? I don't know, because stuff is free. free. <laughs> and it's like, actually, endorsements are more work. They are a lot it's more work. Than just That's, buying everything, because uh, you don't only buy anything, you know what I'm saying? Drummers! So you're watching an amazing drummer on YouTube, and they're playing something so crazy, you just can't figure it out. If only you can tap this drummer on the shoulder and say, hey, can you slow it down and break it down for me, man? PossibleChops.com does exactly that. 
they've asked some of the the top-of-the-line drummers to play in short, digestible phrases some of their craziest chops. Then they slow it down and transcribe it so you can actually learn what the heck they're doing. They're making chops possible. Now, PossibleChops.com is an online drum lesson website that makes it easy to add to your drumming vocabulary from some of the baddest professional drummers. And when I say baddest, I mean the dopest, illest, most ridiculousest drummers you ever heard. Imagine getting a breakdown from drummers who played with the likes of Usher, Earth, Wind & Fire, Chick Corea, Babyface, Sheryl Crow, Tony Braxton, and the list goes on. The PossibleChops.com community is designed to allow drummers to share ideas and help you on your path to becoming a pro and getting gigs. That's right, folks, actually getting real gigs. If you're serious about drumming, do yourself a favor and visit PossibleChops.com. Join today and basic membership is free. However, If you decide to upgrade to a pro membership, use the promo code NOMAD to get your first free month. That's right, folks. Use coupon code NOMAD and you get the whole first month absolutely free. Adding new chops are now made possible for drummers on PossibleChops.com. Add us to your Spotify and other streaming playlists. Let's talk about endorsements. It's difficult. And why is that? Why are endorsements difficult? I, I know why it is, but I want to hear your perspective. I, I, think I have a totally same. different view on, on endorsements, and I'm going to give you my... I yeah, want to hear everybody. Yeah, I want to hear everybody. My view is this. I had X brand that I was endorsed by uh-huh. because I thought I was cool. It came to me, and I was like, yeah, yeah, this is great. But I didn't end up liking it. The endorsement. The endorsement. I didn't end up liking the, the, the product. Yeah. And I said, man, I'm lying to myself. How am I going to come up here and play music that I love and, and play drums that I love and really, like, say, this is horrible. I'm not even digging it. Right. You know, just because this person, X brand, gave you that endorsement, uh, it doesn't mean it's the right fit for you. It does not mean that at all. At all. So before you start looking for the X Y Z brand to give you that thing, it's like find what you love first. I was endorsed by that X Y Z company, okay. and there was this festival that only one kit made it, and it was by this man. And his artist said, you know what, man, all you cats can play it. You know, it was like just, it was the middle of nowhere, big festival. We're talking about, you know, 30,000 people out there waiting and like none of the gear hardly made it. Yeah. So there was one kit left out there and we all played that kit that night. And I was like, this is what I need to be playing. And it what was year because was this? 2006 or seven. That's amazing. Wow. So you yeah, guys been together seven. almost 10 years. Yeah, almost 10 years, yeah. That's amazing. But we were talking about endorsements and how, what is the role of, 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 of a career musician, where I like to refer to, what, what is their responsibility when they get an endorsement? And from you, the product maker, what, how do you view it? I mean, this is a great perspective. This is what all young aspiring endorsee hopefuls yes. need to know. Well, from the, from the manufacturer maker's point of view, you want to be involved with people that are, that are professional in not only in their business situation, but personally too, you know, because they're a reflection of your company. You want somebody that uh, loves your product for what it is and is interested in your gear because it speaks to them, not because they're getting some great deal or, you know... Or because it's free. Yeah, this guy gives it... Well, I can get it free from, from this company, you know, or this guy gives me a better deal than that guy, you know. I think that kind of sours the, the relationship. It's not really very respectful or, or mutual. And the idea is to develop a relationship with somebody that believes you believe in what they're doing they believe in what you're doing you're kind of working together towards a common goal goal try to help out the individual and that individual is trying to promote your brand as well to introduce it to new new people things get convoluted is what's happening right and and uh the waters get cloudy now we all know there's a surplus of musicians these days there's a surplus of musical instruments there's a surplus of everything and there's a lesser demand so you have to pick and choose 
whom you create these relationships with very carefully. Because basically the bottom line is pick a company you really like that speaks to you. You're, you're playing them because you love their instruments, not because you're getting free stuff. Nah, and no, the crazy thing yeah. is, if you do it right, it won't even really be about picking a company. Like right. something you said that It'll was so you. real. Just love what you do and just play. That's it, man. When you sit on that kit and you know that's the kit, that's how you get 10 year relationships. Yeah. I've been with Maypex Drums for 10 years. Ah, Why? Go. Because Eric Groberson yeah, man. sat down on the uh -huh. kit straight out of the box at Jazz Cafe in London. First one that played the kit, and I was like, these are the drums I'm gonna play forever. That's it, that's it. Wow. And that's all it took for me. Then with them ever since, watch growth happen, watch all these different things take place. And then of course now you know you get the guys that are just like, oh I heard they're easy company to get with, so I'm trying to we'll and it's them, yeah, I'm right. gonna go with yeah. them for that. And it's it, like it really jacks up the game and it really it really takes it out of context, man. And I, I look at it the same type of type of situation with Tamil. Like I had been playing Tamil drums and it was like, man, this these are the drums that 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 project and get my sound out there, you know what I'm saying? It lets me execute effectively. It really wasn't a big deal and it was so weird. They came at me, man. They they I had a kid, I was with Sean Kingston at the time, they had a kid sent to Dancing with the Stars. And from that day they were trying to find me and it was weird because it was like I didn't even know and it was just so happened uh, manager at the time was at, at NAM and he went to the, the time of booth and it was like man you know what I'm saying you know James and he was like man we're looking for this guy where is he like what's, what's going on with him and it just was match made in heaven it's been great since then but it's like I didn't focus so much on man what company can give it to me for free I just wanted to play drums man and it was just the love of what I was doing man and it it just made it come together man a lot of attraction bro it just made it come together you know what I really like about these guys is the sense of camaraderie. Yes, they all play the same instrument, so technically they could all be in competition with one another. However, let's seriously take into consideration all of the variables before you turn around and say to your brother or sister, oh man, I can't be cool with you because we're vying for the same gigs. That's a bunch of baloney. First, they live in different cities. Well, there's a lot of different gigs in a lot of different cities. Secondly, they each are their own individual person with their own unique style. So if somebody's gonna hire them, most likely they're gonna hire that person for who they are as a musician and just as a human being off stage. And thirdly, they are just sharing some good respect and love amongst peers. And that's the way it should be. So musicians, listen to me. If you get caught up in that crap, I don't want to hear it. There is no excuse. Don't be in competition with your brothers and sisters out there. It is not worth it. It's too much negativity. Let's all be positive. Trust me, there's enough work to go around for everyone. Subscribe to The Career Musician on Apple Podcasts. Now, that brings up a, a, another good topic because you have five drummers here, right? Yeah, yeah. We have our own character. That's the best thing about our uh, instrument. Yeah, it's yeah. like we could all do the same job, but yeah. we'll always bring our own character. Brian Swan, since you're a, 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 a company owner, yeah. how, how does the, the social media aspect fit in for you? What do you expect your endorsee to do in the social media structure? How much visibility are you hoping to get? Or is, is that just a fallacy? Is it something that starts it's, with the no, company? It's, it's important because everybody's so linked together via right. social media in one way or another, whether it's your Facebook, Instagram, or any of the many Periscope methods, or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever is your deal, you know, yeah. people are connecting that way. So it's important to be that way. I, I don't. I don't think there's any s specific way to promote, but I think it's important that if somebody's going to be an endorser of your product, that they that they talk about it. Nobody wants to see somebody posting ads over and over and getting bombarded. You know, right. if it's part of your regular life, it should be part of your regular conversation, <laughs> and it should be at the frequency that it would normally come up, come up in a conversation. Because right. that's not right. something where, you know, all of a sudden some guy's just hammering on social media about right, this right, particular right. product, right. everybody gets turned off turned to off. that. It's not real. Or in a conversation it's if you fake. say, hey, you should really hire me. I'm That's really the worst good. conversation yeah. right Oh, you got any work? It's, it's, yeah, it's like, dude, really? It's funny though to even hear that kind of stuff because you can, it's such different lingo used in all different levels. Right, it's right. almost like you can tell who's professional who's, who's, who's not. not. I don't think right. I ever remember 
Salim, right? You should hire me. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, of course, I was being a little. No, silly. no, no. I know people who do that. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that. And it's, you know, young cats will do it in a heartbeat. Yo, man, you should hire me. And it's like, what? Really? Yeah, like, I don't know about that. Right, right. You know, it's different than the person coming to you saying, hey, man, we should work together one day. Right. We well, should, let's, we let's, should, we should collaborate. Let's, let's find approach. a way to collaborate. Yeah, 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 yeah. And again, you know if it's somebody that you're, you're yes. interested in. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so, this it's world, this world, man, this is, this is an interesting world. It is. It is. So uh, let's go around the, the circle real quick, the drummer circle with the guitar player holding me. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Just real quick, tell us your name. <laughs> oh, man, I'm James Agnew, man, drummer. Yeah, drummer to the stars. To the star. come on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brian Spawn, owner of Spawn Drums and Simtech Cymbals. That's it, I'm Richie Pena, man. A pleasure to be here amongst the, my amazing drummers. Rashid Williams, man. I'm just a drummer that loves to play, man. You drummer to the too. <laughs> Xavier Valade, Chicago drummer, up and coming, yeah. trying to find my way. Let's talk about perspective. I met Xavier on, uh, on a gig here I was doing with Kirk Whalum in Chicago. Uh, I put a little band together. Kirk said, hey, man, I got to do this gig, but I need to get some local cats. So I made some calls, got the band together. Blah, blah. Thanks to our good friend, Eddie Torres. And we had Chuck Webb on the gig and Stu Miniman. Great band. They, they really kicked ass that night. It was great that day. Uh, Xavier, tell us about the whole experience that you've been going through and where you are and your trajectory and a little bit about what you're learning today, hanging out with these guys. Honestly, this is every drummer's dream, to be sitting in a drum circle like this. I mean, I'm not even a drummer, and I know that. For me, I'm kind of a guy of few words, but I kind of basically just like to have words of wisdom. And I think for me, I'm not the kind of guy to just kind of like jump out to something that I don't know what's going on. I think as far as in my career right now, nobody really knows me. They probably know of me or whatever, but you know, I would probably like just to learn from people that's out there doing it. Right. You know, and what better way to find your niche when people that's already doing it? You know, I'm sure people have made mistakes, but you know, you just you you know you want to put your best foot forward. So well, let me just say something about your character that spoke to me. Is your, your humility is great, and I love it, man. And you can—he's really talented. He could really play. He's got big ears, and and what we know about big ears is that's like the most important part about his gig, right? So other young drummers who may be listening to this, other young musicians who may be listening to this, keep that in mind. It's all about humility, and you know, knowing when to speak, knowing when to keep your mouth shut. Always keep your eyes and ears wide open, and keep that mouth closed. And when you do speak, speak, speak politely with, with, with courtesy and, you know, and that and humility, and that's definitely you, man. Yeah, so, I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're in the drummer circle. Right. And I'm just going to correct one thing he says. Drummers never make mistakes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, yeah. how you close this that thing right well, here. That's how we are. Well, on that note, you're absolutely right, because you won't have no time. Wait, wait a minute. First of all, did you just say no? Drummers can't play notes. Oh. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. <laughs> And you guessed it, that wraps another episode of the Career Musician Podcast by yours truly, Nomad. Why do they call me Nomad? Because I've traversed the globe, spreading the joy of music, one song, one gig, one note at a time. Don't forget, subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, follow, like, love, download, stream, talk about everything the career musician because we are all in this together thank you so much until next time rock and roll r&b jazz polka reggae folk boleros oh let's think of some more merengue salsa and all the genres of music ever created ever known to man thank you for tuning in to the career musician please click the subscribe button and share the career musician podcast on your social media feeds I'm just a nomad, nowhere man Writing the songs in this one-man band A nomad Sometime until then, baby, don't you cry. Cause I'll be gone. 
Nomad here, host and creator of the Career Musician Podcast, wanting to tell you all about PantheonPodcast.com network. I am a part of this collective that is solely music-based podcasts. And guess what? It is the only one of its kind on the globe so far. It is a collective of an independent network of podcasts all based on music, which dig into the culture, technology, history, and everything else you can imagine that has to do with music. Thank you so much for listening, and be sure to check us out at PantheonPodcasts.com.